Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are having a fantastic day. Now, this video topic is something that people have asked me over and over and over again, probably for two years, and I haven't done the video because it's a tough question to answer. Even when someone walks into the dealership and says, should I buy a Corvette or should I buy a Camaro? Should I buy a Z06, should I buy a Z01? It's a tough question to answer because it really depends on a lot of your personality, your driving habits, but I think now, after all of this time, as an owner of each one of these vehicles, as a salesman of each one of these vehicles, I think I can answer this. But I'm gonna get a little bit of help from the wife because her opinion could be helpful to you as well. Uh, now that it is May, hopefully summer is here to stay and we can have some nice weather with our sports cars. Hey, if this is the first time that you're watching my video, make sure you don't forget to hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notifications on. This is Porsche, this is Corey. They make uh, some appearances on the uh, channel every once in a while. And the shirt I'm wearing is part of the Chevy Dude Swag Store. So make sure you click the link in the description below and get your Chevy Dude Swag as well. So this is my 2016 Camaro. Now this thing is my daily driver. It's a 2SS car, uh, fully loaded, magnetic ride control. Uh, MMR wheels actually reached out to me last year and I put these absolutely awesome um, Z28 wheels on it so if you want some wheels check out mmr wheels they do an awesome job and then this one over here is our fun toy my fun toy because this is my 2016 corvette z51 what excuse me whose toy is that it's mine no i have a facebook pro uh facebook pro yeah, you see, you can't spit it out, so it doesn't count. I got proof on Facebook. Oh my God, that Facebook that post. Okay, anyways, regardless of what she says, this is my car. No. And my car. <laughs> so anyways, 2016 Corvette Z51 manual transmission. Uh, this is something that I thought of and bought this exactly the way it sets for a reason. As the video suggests, I'm gonna share with you the reasons behind if you should buy a Camaro, or you should buy a Corvette. So like normal, I'll stand back here so that way it appears on camera that we're the same height because she's 5'2", I'm 6'3". No, five three. you're not. No, you're not. Stop trying to lie to YouTube, okay? Why don't you stop trying to lie? <laughs> so uh, she drives this one more than I do because it's her car and uh, I don't let her drive this one. So I just... It's not you don't let me, I don't want to drive it. <laughs> So, so like I said, two totally different cars, two totally different purposes, and the ride and handling in these cars is completely different. So to kind of tell you a little bit about the Camaro, since I've got 60,000 miles on this car, this is an absolute fun car. I love it. There's definitely a lot more room on the interior cabin of this car, and even though that it has back seats, they're useless. Absolutely useless. <laughs> you can't put anybody in there. We have. We have put somebody back there, but that's because we didn't like them. No, I've ridden back there. That's why I said we didn't like them. <laughs> <laughs> I've so, ridden back there and Onion's ridden and just, back there. And just so you know, coming up in June, we're married for 20 years. We've been, we're high school sweethearts. We've been together for 26 years. And this is kind of like our normal daily thing. We never argue because you know I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pointless to argue, right? Uh, last time I checked, the wife is always right. <laughs> So like I said earlier, this is a 2SS and it's got every option available on it, including the magnetic ride control. Now, I think magnetic ride control on this car is a must. On this car, not so much. And I'm gonna explain why here in a second. So when I sit here and I have this magnetic ride control and I switch it to track or sport or touring mode, I can see a huge difference. I think General Motors used the magnetic ride control in this car and tuned it a little bit differently than what they do on this car. Now I have people ask me on this car all the time, do I need magnetic ride control? And I typically tell them no. Now, the reason I say no is because this is set up for track use. I don't have magnetic ride control on that car. And like I told you earlier, I built this car specifically the way I wanted it to be. So along with this car, the ride and handling is completely different on this car. I'm taking this from someone who went to Mexico across the bridge on a routine basis. I have no idea who they are. They're just telling me this is what the, the truth is. But there is a bridge coming from Kentucky to Indiana that's got a slight curve on it that this car will maybe want to top out at about 105, um, maybe now down to 95. 105 would be pushing it. This car here, that 
can go around that corner with no problem at about 110. So the way these cars are set up stance wise, Camaro sits a little bit higher than the Corvette. And I think that the stance and the wide track on these two cars is completely different. So you're definitely gonna get a ride handling difference in this car versus this car. I think this is a little bit nicer ride than this, but at the same time, I love the compact cabin of this car because every time i'm like i really love my camaro and this is why this has been so hard to do a video on because i own both right so every time i get it out of this car and i'm like i really love this car i love the ride i love the handling it does have an automatic transmission which i'm rather have a manual but it is a cool automatic transmission but uh and then i hop in this car and it's like wow this is fun this really feels like a sports car even Maybe though they're both sports cars my tesla the Tesla's is a little bit different. So <laughs> what do you like about this car over this car? Well, I would say the biggest thing I like is the comfort of the seats and the drive. So you like the Camaro seats better? Heck no. No, <laughs> I already knew that, but. I've driven 10 hours on a trip in both cars. I've done it on both cars. I was more comfortable in my Corvette than that thing. And I kind of have to agree. So I've kind of got a, a bum back back here and it's been bothering me a lot lately. So I get into this car, I drive a half hour to the chiropractor that I've been seeing and my back is on fire. It is shooting pain nonstop. Kind of happens in this one, but it kind of happens more to the end of my drive rather than just like three minutes down the road. It's crazy, the difference. So I mentioned earlier that these cars kind of set high and low, right? There's not much difference between the two getting out of them. If you have a bad back like I do, you still have to push yourself up. Well, you don't because you're five two, but the <laughs> but being oh, six but being six foot three, I do have to push myself up pretty equally out of both cars. It's a little bit easier out of this car because uh, there's more seat, there's more door. It seems like this door opens up wider than that door, I think. And what el what else do you think between the two of them? Um. So so I want to do like sell somebody on that car sell somebody on that car somebody who's walking into the dealership or doing research online what's what would they rather have well of course the corvette of course the corvette <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean it just depends on what your what your reasonings are I, we don't drive this hardly in the winter right so, and I drive this all year round. And yeah, you drive that. This year this round. car, even I think with the AS3 tires, and if you've got AS3 tires, you can kind of comment in the section below. But even with the AS3 tires that you can get on that, it still is really really tough to drive in the winter time. So I can't. If we have to move the cars, that car doesn't move. You got to get people to push it and stuff like that in the snow. It doesn't move at all. Yeah, I would say. I mean, I've driven it in under 40 degree weather, and you try to hit it hard at all. You get squirrely. Yeah, you do. That's, that's, the, that's the tires. Yep. And, you know, the tires just don't stick. I mean, it's just one of these things. I don't even like driving it in the rain. Not because I'm a Corvette owner, but because it's just not fun. It, it'll melt when it gets rained, doesn't it? No. Oh, it doesn't? Oh, okay. No, so, it does not melt. So, in that, and that's and that's the that's kind of where I wanted to go. And we're not, we didn't script this. This is all ad-libbed because I trust her. Uh, do I trust you? Okay, so I do trust her opinion. She's been around me in the car business for 19 years, so she's very involved. And, and probably if you went into car sales, you'd probably smoke half of our sales staff at the dealership. So, but uh, it's a different subject maybe. So, and that's the biggest thing is maybe the best tool is to make sure that you can work with a sports car enthusiast. I mentioned it in my last video that uh, you wanna call the dealership and ask for the Corvette specialist, ask for the Camaro specialist. Who's your who's your best guy that can that knows everything about Camaros? If they don't have someone, maybe call another dealership. Maybe do some research online and find someone. Unfortunately, there's nobody in the automotive industry doing what I'm doing and showing you the differences between cars and how to not get scammed over by car dealerships. But there are people out there who are on Facebook, who are on LinkedIn, who are on Twitter that are doing it. So maybe put out a post like, hey, who did you buy your Camaro from? There's a a lot of Corvette and Camaro groups out there that you can be a part of on Facebook as well and a lot of times they have good information as well so the best tips that I could give is drive both of them and the reason I want you to make sure that you can get a touch with a Corvette or Camaro or specialty car salesperson is because a lot of dealerships 
don't want you to test drive these cars. They have a million reasons. We're gonna do a video on that. But that Corvette specialist, that Camaro specialist, he's happy to do it. You come see me, as long as you're wanting to buy a car, we can test drive it. If I feel that you're not gonna mess, if you're gonna mess around with me, you're you just mean, wasting my time. You don't want 16 year olds coming in asking to drive a vet? I've taken 16 year olds on test drives because, because of just a case by case situation, right? So I've sold 16 year olds Z06s, or I sold, I sold up I in just Washington did the State. Bump yeah. up on that. Yeah, I just did it in Washington <laughs> State. 16 year old kid, I think he might have been 15 at the time. No, I think he was 16 at the time, calls me and wants to buy a Z06 and his dad's paying for it. There you go. So I, I mean, I don't, really judge against anybody's age i just don't want to i just don't want anybody to be jacking around you know with a car salesman and all of a sudden you wreck a car that you had no intention to buy then you're in different trouble different different subject but hopefully a little bit of banter that we have a uh, little bit of fun that we have will help you decide between these cars do you have anything to add hmm. i think you talked enough for the book. <laughs> i do talk a little bit don't i not just a little bit <laughs> All right, guys, so there's the differences between the Corvette and Camaro. Hope you enjoyed that. If you do have any questions, let me know. These guys are going to start fighting like they always do uh, on, the, on the videos. But, uh, hey, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notifications on, and get your Chevy Dude swag at ChevyDudeStore.com. Have a great day. Drive safe.